also at Glastonbury. Oh, oh my god. Everywhere you go, there is there's attention to detail. It's absolutely unbelievable, isn't it? It's just amazing, absolutely amazing. It is the best, it's the best place I've ever been to. I'm still in a shocked mood this morning, Reese. So just cover your dinner with a can of coke. <laughs> But the best way I can describe it is a little bit like a cream egg. Um, but what I was disappointed with or confused about is that... So welcome back to Romany Pirates and you join us this week in Glastonbury. Glastonbury, let's check it out. So Glastonbury, oh, oh my god. Wow, I, I don't even know what to say. We, we've hardly been sort of chatting and filming and talking because <laughs> my eyes are just everywhere. It's amazing. It's everywhere we go, people look like us and we don't stand out. Absolutely and amazing oh. to the point where I've just said to Emma, like, <laughs> let's have a look at property prices here. It's a really sort of welcoming place. There's a lot of community um, houses that we found out mm. about where you can exchange goods instead of having to pay for goods. Um, there's a lot of like open community houses that welcome you in to be able to use showers and washing machines and things like that. Um, it's just an absolutely awesome place with an awesome vibe. Everywhere you go, there is there's attention to detail. It's absolutely unbelievable, isn't it? It's just amazing, absolutely amazing. It is the best. It's the best place I've ever been to. Well, sure, you can see like the artwork behind us and the sculptures, and even like the tunnel is filled with amethysts and stones and and sculpture bits inside the walls and in the floor, even where you walk in, it's just unbelievable. We'll we'll take you through and we'll show you and try and give you a bit of a feel and for the vibe that there is. Um, but you've got to imagine as well that the smells, haven't you? Yeah. You know, Everywhere. Strong, it's a like strong smell of like incense, and yeah, it's just incredible. So this is a really cool idea. Um, just on the main street, and um, it's like a surplus food community fridge. So you just come in and if you can afford to, you leave um, a donation, if you can't, you don't need to. Um, and it's all kind of like breads and fruits and vegetables and things from like a surplus stock from supermarkets or, or allotments and things like that. It's amazing. That was an amazing idea. <laughs> So when we got here, um, it's not disappointed. Um, but what I was disappointed with or confused about is that 
I felt like it'd be a really easy place to park and people had told us it'd be an easy place to park but when we've come down there's loads of restrictions and it's really difficult it's so sort of like a almost like a hidden kind of scene that goes on um, and you've got to talk to people um, and they've got to decide whether they're going to tell you where these places are or not basically um, so we've talked to one of the local people and we're like yep yeah, you're definitely one of us it's absolutely fine and um, we'll tell you where these places are um, so we're going to go and have a look around some um, sort of community houses um, that exist around here um, and some park ups um, and just see what they've got to offer. Don't know whether we'll be able to film at these places or not. We're going to have to see because um, we don't want to offend anybody, upset anybody, and um, we don't know kind of like how quiet they like to keep it. Daisy's enjoyed a shopping trip, but she is absolutely shattered. Bless her. I can't believe like we've never been here before, and everybody that we've met, we've met loads of really cool local people today, just wandering around and exploring, and everybody's like you've never been but you know you dress like that why have you never been to Glastonbury so it's been a bit of a running joke throughout the day that we've never kind of been it like the way we dress and stuff and the way we are and traveling and like living the nomadic lifestyle or whatever you want to call it like sometimes although you kind of have an attitude of you know it's my life I'll dress what I want a lot of the time you do feel like you're the person that kind of stands out a little bit which obviously you know we do like but coming here literally everybody looks like us everybody's dressed like us everybody's living in vans everywhere and uh yeah it's just it's just a really cool welcoming place to come just parked up down the road we're gonna go check out a cafe now that's open till quite late see if they've got any caramel lattes there uh, and then we have found somewhere to park for the night which is like where all the kind of vans go uh, <laughs> like hippie like it like a, it's like a hippie commune basically and the back streets so we've just uh, got back to the van we've parked up in uh, like the uh, the hippie commune there's loads of vans here just everywhere it's really cool um, we went to a uh, late night cafe and had a caramel latte and then we stopped and had a drink uh, in one of the local uh, local pubs and again tonight we've met some like lovely local people some people uh, traveling as well but I think the plan tomorrow is here at this kind of like little hippie commune area um, we'll tell you more about it tomorrow it's a really really interesting place and they've got like a market on tomorrow so we're gonna get up early and see if that is on and uh, just gonna settle down for the night before we see what tomorrow brings Please. Mm. What's that noise? I don't know, it sounds like somebody's having a disco. Oh, it'll be that gym. We're parked next to a gym. You got to see. <sighs> Morning, Daisy. Morning. I've got to have to turn it on. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We're just uh, making a brew on the Gretel. I'm still in a shocked mood this morning Reese. about that music about the way in which i was rudely awoken i had a really good night's sleep and then woke up this morning to like this what i think was hip-hop music <laughs> and it was really loud and i thought what's going on there must be like a crowd of cars around us or something and we've gone to bed right next to a gym which i didn't realize last night um and everybody was here at like seven o'clock this morning with this music blaring out while some instructor shouts at them. I just don't get it. Like Saturday morning, you've been at work all week and then you get up Saturday morning, probably about half past six to get yourself to the gym for like seven o'clock to then be shouted at. I just, I know it's probably very intolerant of me and I really do try and be a very tolerant person, but I just really don't understand it. That's what it is. And probably because I'm a little bit jealous because I'd never actually get out of bed and do that myself. We sat outside at the old tannery, um, which is a really relaxed atmosphere, um, really laid back, very self-sufficient restaurant. It's got some great vegan choices as well. Next door is a 23,000 square foot building, which is called the Zigzag Building. This is a sort of hippie commune where they provide a clothes exchange, they grow their own organic vegetables and around the outside of the building it's surrounded by many people who are living in vans. We'd packed up here overnight on recommendation but stayed far enough away to make sure that we didn't disturb anybody. 
we've just had uh, a lovely coffee in that cafe we're gonna head up um, into the town now because uh, there's a craft fair going on there's meant to be some drumming going on today and um, so we've moved the van a little bit closer make it a little bit easier for me and um, walking wise <laughs> and we'll uh, hopefully get you a bit of filming of uh, the people playing instruments a bit of street art things like that and um, yeah see what today brings Are you ready to set off yeah ready to set off got, got changed you. I got these uh, these new jeans trousers yesterday and this new top, so I've got all my new gear on today. I can find you something new to wear today, Daisy. Might be something at the craft store, maybe. We've uh, just been up to the craft fair. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, I enjoyed it. We're all nice. right. Yeah, they had all these kind of like little uh, felt animals and um, little felt fairies and stuff. And honestly, I could have spent a fortune, but you just you can't afford to, can you? But they were quite reasonable yeah. price, weren't they? We did get a few things. Got a little. Uh, Look at this. Look at that. Got some little bunting for the van. So it's that'll nice. be nice. How clever is that though? Somebody's taking the time out of their day to knit that. It's lovely, isn't yeah. it? Got that. That was, um, I think that were a fiver, so that wasn't bad. Daisy's got a new coat. We've little got jumper. Daisy, look at her. Little hippie jumper. She's really cute. You look very cute in that. You look like a unicorn, Daisy. We'll try it on for a minute. minute. And I've been searching ages for some fingerless mittens because when I'm filming, especially in the winter, and my hands get really cold with the camera, so fingerless mittens, hand knitted, a fiver. Yeah, they, they were good. That you can't they? go really wrong with good. that. Yeah, that's I've seen. I've, I saw some like early today, like you know, in different shops, and then they were, well, like, they were quite like expensive. Quid, yeah, weren't they? and then when we went to the craft fair. I saw these. I was like, that's really good for a fiver. And I prefer as well to get things that you know have been handmade by somebody, um, especially when you're meeting the person that's done it as well yeah. and the effort that they've gone to, to put in. Yeah, I mean, lovely. like Daisy's jumper was like three pound fifty, and when you wrong, think somebody's you spent all that time making that. Daisy's uh, backing off now because she don't <laughs> want me to put it on her. Um, we don't just dress her up for the fun no. of it, even though she does look cute. Um, but it's two hours get really cold really easily. Um, and when Daisy gets cold as well, because she's got some problems with her muscles and, and uh, you know various issues that she's got, we've talked about before, um, she kind of seizes up as well as she gets cold. Um, but yeah, we're really pleased with all those. Um, and we've also kind of got some new little hair braids as well, little, haven't we? Little beads. Only like a couple of pound each, little beads and little uh, kind of dangly bits for my dreads. So quite pleased with them because they can be quite expensive sometimes. Um, so we're going to go have a bit of a lunch now, aren't we? Have a little bit of a picnic yeah. um, and then head up um, and hopefully catch the drums. <laughs> This guy does street art using chalks and leaves inspirational quotes for people. I got chatting to him and he even gave me a little gift. It's absolutely amazing. Yay? Nay? I'm putting it up there. I don't know. What do you think? Got on the curtain pole? I don't know. I think there. Let us know in the comments if you agree. I think there. Some of you will remember in the episode where we went to Cornwall, uh, it's called the reality of van life in Cornwall. I asked people to basically let me know if they had a one pot recipe that I could cook so that I can learn to cook more in the van and uh, Julie Blackstock said to do some chicken in uh, with like some Chinese spices with some diet coke. However, <laughs> We, uh, we've been to the shop and they don't have any vegan chicken so we're going to do mushrooms with tomato puree because I think it did say tomato puree on it and some mange too with some soy sauce and the special ingredient diet coke apparently it's so this is an experiment it's either going to be horrible because it's not really Julie's recipe, but thank you anyway, Julie, for the inspiration for what I'm calling the mushroom diet coke wrap. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that watch us quite a lot, you'll know that um, Reese is a fantastic cook and cooks all the time, don't you, Reese? Absolutely. Not at all. Cut these in half. Let's make note of this, people, because I'm not going to repeat myself. Julie's probably sat at home now watching this, laughing. I bet it's a wind up. <laughs> Turn my hair up. All chefs do this. I've seen, I've seen them do it. Daisy's really excited about it, aren't you, Daisy? Are you excited? You won't like this, Daisy. 
You excited, Daisy? You still a cooking? Look at that. Tomato puree. Take your spoon. Probably about that much, I reckon. Handful of Monge too. Gordon Ramsay, if you are watching this, you can get hold of me at romanypirates at gmail.com. The first challenge is getting into the bottle, isn't it? It's like it comes with a free game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it just, oh god, somebody got poisoned, didn't they? Soy sauce. Did yeah, they? Yeah, it wrong news, you've got to be careful. Like, what's going on here? Look at this. I'm not making this up. There's like a little, look at this, it's like a plug. Is that meant to be there? A bit of that in. Lovely jubbly. And then you want half a can of cork. Like that advert in it where then women rushed at window and is like that drinking. <laughs> so just cover your dinner with a can of cork. <laughs> Freaker. A little bit of that in. Now this won't part of Julie's recommendation. <laughs> but we don't have any Chinese <laughs> Chinese spices. <laughs> Whatever it was you said, Julie, so so we're just going with a bit of paprika, bang a bit of that in there. There's not really much of this that is part of Julie's recommendation. Not really, but, but, but Julie's... And the no, but Ju sauce. it was Julie that's inspired me to do this. It's like the first person to ever cook a Bakewell tart, which actually was first called a Bakewell pudding in the town called Bakewell. That's an interesting fact for you. But that was just an experiment, wasn't it? And now look at, you go into your supermarket or whatever you get and you get Mr Kipling's Bakewell tarts now, don't you? And that all started with somebody's idea. So who knows, this could be Reese's Mushroom Diet Coke wrap. I have not forgotten about the rest of your brilliant ideas. I know Alan popped some down there and a few other people. I'm going to simultaneously work through each one. <laughs> <laughs> Poisoning Emma in the process. I've got life insurance, guys. Don't worry too much about it. it might be the best thing you've ever tasted. We're ready. I think it looks nice. It smells nice. We've put a bit of cheese on wraps a bit of cheese on cheese makes everything taste better anyway doesn't it <laughs> but i'm quite hopeful i'm quite <laughs> so there it is yeah mushroom diet coke wrap you want me to do a taste test mm. genuinely that is really nice it? <laughs> yeah yeah it is really nice so a massive thank you to julie <laughs> um seriously that were that were really nice so genuinely thank you because that means there's now two meals i can cook well, my only complaint where i'd have eaten more that yeah. was really nice i really enjoyed that there you go thank you julie for the inspiration and i like the fact that i've made it the, my own as well i like the fact that i've made it my own recipe i've not just copied somebody else's work i've actually taken the inspiration <laughs> <laughs> look at you acting like you're some I've kind of jamie oliver now i am i am the next jamie you're oliver you've seen, you've, cook. Cook you've, seen me, you've seen me you've seen me doing it you've seen me cooking now everybody's seen me cooking you know how good i am Emma. So Glastonbury. Glastonbury. That Epic. were an experience. Yeah, yeah. Right. You'll have seen earlier on in the episode where I said this is the best place I've ever been. And at the time, for me, it was. But the best way I can describe it is a little bit like you a cream egg. all year, don't you, for a cream egg and then Easter comes. And you have that cream egg and it's absolutely delicious. And you do it again, but you wouldn't necessarily have two or three cream eggs, would you? <laughs> You wouldn't know, would you? That's the best way I can describe it. And for me, Glastonbury were like that. It was like, bang, that first mouthful, that first impact were like, this is absolutely heaven on earth. Especially for us, you know, nomads, hippies, travellers, whatever you want to call us, it was the perfect place, wasn't it? Yeah. But then I just found today it was a little bit like full on for me. I think it's because, as you know, we travel, we, you know, for the past 10 years, we've been traveling um, across not just the UK, but Europe. We go to Ibiza regular, and we talk about Ibiza quite a lot because it's one of our favorite places. Um, and it's got that kind of free spirited vibe, I'd call it. Um, and we haven't been in a long time because of COVID and everything else, and we've really missed it. So when we went to sort of Glastonbury for that first day, it was that feeling of walking down the street and seeing other people looking the way that you look mm. and, you know, finding other people that have the same views that you've got and being able to share that. And I definitely think that there are, like, especially the older generation that have lived there a long time, um, you know, and a lot of people that are visiting there as well um, that we spoke to. Because we've had some really good conversations, haven't we? We've met some lovely people. And you kind of really could feel that they've got this free-spiritedness about them. Yeah, and it's really genuine. 
um but there's also like a competition in there between a place that's kind of trying too hard to be something mm. Um, and a place that is naturally yeah. something. So there's the really genuine side of it, which is brilliant and it's lovely, but there's also a little bit of kind of a superficial vibe going on there. And we mm. talked to some shop owners who kind of said the same thing. There's a lot of mm. places that have shut down during COVID and apparently a lot of new people have come in and taken over. They've lost a lot of that kind of handmade British stuff in, in some of the shops, not all of them. And I think with that has come an influx of new people um, and sometimes what people think being a traveller or a nomad or a hippie or free spirit or whatever, what they think that is, is different to what it actually is. You know, we, we haven't we haven't done Glastonbury Tour and we haven't done the Well or the Abbey. Uh, the reason we didn't do the Abbey is where it was something like 17, 18 pounds yeah. each, each to get in. And the Well and the Tour were just, I mean, it were rammed. So if you don't know what Glastonbury Tour is, it's like a tower that's linked to King Arthur at the top of this big hill. And it's, it's really cool, it's really famous. But, and I just said to Emma, like, number one, there were no way you no, could have walked that far, were there? Because it's really steep. Uh, and number two, that you were literally stood in a queue to get to the top. But on a whole, highly, highly recommended if you've not been to Glastonbury. Well, you've got an experience. You've got to go. You've got to go. It's, and we'll it's... definitely go back, you know. we've and it's, I mean, the clothes and the stuff that you oh, can find, amazing, which yeah. we cannot find anywhere normally. I think what we've tried to do with Glastonbury, really, is try and find the true heart of Glastonbury like that. You know, the underneath yeah. kind of Glastonbury. And the um, zigzag place, that were... Yeah, that were it. Like, that, that was really cool. You know, yeah. You know, that, that we went in, as, as you saw, for a coffee and stuff, and they're really nice people. Very chilled out. There's a, a famous lane uh, down there, which... Um, do your own research and stuff to find that. But um, there's, like, there's literally... We, we sort of miles. drove past it. Miles and miles <laughs> and miles, van after van after van, caravan, caravan. And there's um, a little shop called Lu Lulu's, I think, mm. um, which is like a vintage shop. Really lovely lady in there, does some really nice stuff. That's not too expensive. And right opposite there is, like, oh, a community yeah. cafe that's just been set up. And they're open until, like, 8pm every night. Everyone just, like, chats to each other. Yeah, and they really have guitar playing nice and, you know, stuff you know, like that. Feel. That's got a nice feel. That would a genuine kind genuine. of vibe to it, that one. not it? Yeah, and it's just just important, I guess, to point out, when you say Glastonbury to somebody, they think of the big festival, no. and actually, you know, that is cool. And, but yeah, Glastonbury Town itself is, is something really special. But let us know in the comments if you've been and what your experiences are, because it's always good. If somebody goes on and watches this in a couple of years' time, and hears our opinions, and then scrolls down the comments, it's always really good for that person to kind of read what other people's experiences yeah. are. The plan now is to go to a place uh, in Cornwall that's full of myth and magic. And Aww. it's just going to be absolutely epic. So make sure you watch that But to even week. get there, we've got to overcome one of our biggest yeah. fears. One of my fears Both and of one of Emma's got, fears. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm dreading it all at the same time. Oh, yeah. We're going to write our story. You'll write your story. And uh, we'll see you next week.